I'm here to discuss creating tables in Excel. They have some powerful features. It can be actually a simplistic way, which doesn't mean really simple, of looking at data. What I have here is over 700 rows of data. And it's a bank, and I might want to find out what's going on at a certain branch, what's going on a certain day, a certain date. It's all for a specific month of the year. I'm inside the table set two things do not have blank rows or blank columns in between because this will mess up the data set unless you choose to highlight it but you don't want blank data rows in there I'm on the home tab I say format as table you can use many different designs you could use the alternating colors which is nice it's highlighting the whole thing you've got header rows there these are like field names I say OK and what I can do, a few things here, you can do filtering of the data. Let's say I want to know the account type. And I could uncheck this. I could just select checking. You could do checking and savings. But I've got all the checking accounts. The numbers over here go into random order. It hides things. And what it says here in the lower left-hand corner of my task pane, 274 records were found with this filter. Next thing I want to do, I want to find out what happened at a branch. I am only interested, let's say, in North County. Check that one off. It goes down to 60 records. Now, let's say I want to go... We can narrow this down really tight into the day of the week at North County um, with only check-in accounts. You've got a very nice feature. I'm on the table to the design tab here. I'm using version 2016. It will work similarly with previous editions. What I am in here, I'm in the design. I say total row. I go to the bottom. I like this feature a lot. Let's say I'm in here. I have that triangle. I could get the sum of what this was. 388,000. I could also find maybe the maximum or the average, the standard deviation. So this is very useful, especially with the numbers. And it's giving me a count of 60 transactions. If I don't want this bar again, I go onto the design tab, I shut it off. Next thing I want to discuss with this, what it does, it creates a brand new range, um, a named range. And if I add a row down below, it will incorporate it. But let's say I am just going to do a copy here. And I have it down here. I paste it. If I go and I have to work with that range here, I click on in here on the design. It shows you how it's designed. But what I'm going to do, I go into formulas. I want to go into the name manager. It's saying just rows through. 2,706 sorry and I need to include those other rows watch this I am gonna go into here I'm going to delete these things here as I said if I were typing it in it would have been fine I'm in the name manager it's still not saying 706 I want to edit this I can't do it it's locked so I'm gonna close out of this what you have to do at this point. Uh, you go back into the design here. And what you can do, you can see resize table. You could just drag it down. Or I could just type in 710. It has everything finally included. So you've got to be careful when you're doing this. Some people use name table ranges for creating pivot tables. And if you don't do this, the data will not refresh correctly.